Welcome back to How You Know. Uh, oops. <laughs> Starring it. Peter Lewis and Austin Titel. No, you heard it right here. Peter Lewis and Austin Titel. Why? Because Jared's on an audition. So we, we had to replace him. This is show business, baby. Show business. You don't show up, you're replaced. <laughs> right, Peter? That's right. That's how it goes. Peter, um... So let's talk about what happened uh, when you first got here. Mm. What, what were you thinking when I gave you the silent treatment when I was just staring at you? I thought that maybe you had issues with a friend uh, or something going on. I don't know. You are busy with something. It was like you are busy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can see, this is probably the fastest we've ever started <coughs> a show because we have one camera. How much easier is it? Like, I, I'm, I'm not saying that, that Jared, but I'm saying how much easier is it when it's just the us two if we have one camera there's no Jared? Like the last time we did it. You yeah, know? like the last um, time. But but the last time we had Zoom, remember? We no, still we had did Zoom. have Jared, yes. We did yes, have Jared, yes, yes. Yeah. So how it's easy the... is it without Jared? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the less amount of people, you know, it's going to be simpler. It's going to be easier. So. so it's Jared's fault. No, it's not. But, you know. No, StreamYard just, just gives trouble. I mean, I don't know how to describe it. I, I really don't. I almost, I almost cursed again. Remember yesterday I dropped the... Remember the last show I dropped the F-bomb twice? Yeah, I hope none of you remember that. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the audience here totally missed that part. Oh, so, the only okay. reason why it takes forever to set up is because when we try to put... Anytime you try to put two or more cameras in this software using the same computer, it does not like anything. And then it would make sense where it's like everybody bring, brings their own computer, but and then the audio gets messed up because we only have one audio board. So it makes no sense to do any of that stuff. So I don't know why this big time streamyard like we're paying the monthly fee for it. Why can't it do this stuff? Like, yeah. come on, this is 2021. This is in 1992. Okay, <clears throat> give me a break. This isn't when the Islanders were good. Okay, this is when the Islanders are bad. Okay, <laughs> well actually, I just say all New York teams bad besides the Bills and the Yankees, and I guess now I'm probably the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, Islanders are doing well. I mean, Sabers have promise. They they beat Jersey last night. So, oh yeah, I forgot the Buffalo Sabers. People just yeah. for, everybody forgets about Buffalo. Yeah, and they have really big time players play for them. You know, even former Islander like Pat Lafontaine, you know, very very big player for the Islanders. He was at their last Finals run, the fifth in a row, um, the the record breaking nineteen consecutive playoff wins, and they lost to to the Oilers with Gretzky and Messier. So if you ever go on YouTube and you type in a song. From like the early 2000s, there's a lyrical video made by a Windows Movie Maker. Shout out to those people who made those lyrical video videos because those are great. Yeah, and, and then, we probably wouldn't be here without them. Yeah, honestly. And then you would uh, you would go to the converter and get free music, free MP3 music. Yep. It's and good. yeah, my Movie Maker, you know, it did its job. I mean, what was annoying was that sometimes, like, I'm making drum cover videos, you know, cover songs on the drums. And I don't know, it would just make things sound weird and all that. Maybe Modulated. I just wasn't familiar the, with the software. Get, get the mic closer to you. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's just like... Don't bump, don't bump the thing. All right, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah, good. Yeah. He's about to bump the... We're about to go to a commercial break again. <laughs> He's about to mess it up again. The third commercial break. It's only break. Uh, not even 12 minutes in. No. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Sponsors would love us, honestly. Mm. Yeah, keep playing their stuff, you know. It's, it's helping them. That's it. You know, that's the bottom line here. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't familiar with, with Movie Maker too much, but it always make my stuff sound weird. Like, I wouldn't, you know, What's finagle your, with things too what much. What were the drum covers you used to do? Uh, whatever songs, you know, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. What's your favorite song to play right on the drums? Hmm. It might be... Okay, it's either... Inerty Attic, ESP. Oh no, no, Area Tarka by Inerty Attic. What is what? Is, what? what by the Mars saying? Volta. No way, really? Yeah. One, um. I told you, Blake Fleming. Yeah, that's awesome. And the uh, yeah, one of their. You it, like Mars Volta? I told you that. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, dude. You want to meet the guy? I get you I, set up. I've been telling you since uh, I was going to Russia, in 2017. I really want to meet this guy. I'll meet him. I know him. I, I took drumming lessons with him. I mean, listen, he was a hard butt. Hard, I can say hard ass. He was a hard ass because I, so. I, I took his class way too fast. Like, I should not have. Like, he was still showing me no placements, and he just did not want to show me. He's like, it was more for advanced drummers. But it, it really showed me that's like, you really got to know what, what you're doing. You can't waste your guy's time. But I did get a free book out of it. That's, that's uh, great. Yeah. So it was pretty good. I'll set you up with that. Maybe, yeah. we could, maybe we could have him on the show to talk about drumming. I mean, that'd be sick. I, you know, because I, I love Mars Volta. And yeah, what you know, what he sort of laid out for them. I mean, that that stuff was great. I mean, they're like, they're like a newer Led Zeppelin, maybe a little trippier, 
Uh, but they're really good. I like playing their stuff, especially Area Tarka. And then, otherwise, I like Bullet, Bullet with Butterfly Wings by the Smashing Pumpkins. You know, Rat in a Cage, that song. Do you have any, like, normal music you play to? I mean, Pumpkins, that's a big band. That was very popular. No, but, like, any normal, like, just, like, nice, easy going. There's a lot of songs. I mean, I like, uh, I don't know, if you call Say It Ain't So an easier song. I love that song. Okay, yeah, I, I like playing I play Say It Ain't So all the time. I play that. I play B- Buddy Holly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I play Band on the Run by Wings. You know, the Paul oh. McCartney band. Band I, on the Run, yeah. I love, oh, I that, love song. that song. It's good so, song. I, I like songs I can just jam out to, and I like songs. Do you do you put your own flair to it where, like, you do you play it straight, or do you play it the way that, that you think it, like, do you play it technically right, or do you play it? The way that you want to play it. I'll definitely add fills if That's what I, do. I like it. You know, I'll play the, like if I'm playing, let's say, Danny California by the Chili Peppers, you know, I'll I'll add some fills my, here and my there. My final song that I had to play for, uh, did you ever have to do those, um, I don't know, probably not, you had to do those um, committees where you, three people, three judges would watch you pra- watch you play. Did you ever do that? So I went to the Long Island Drum School that used to be in Plainview, now it's in Hicksville. Chris and- Durst. <laughs> <laughs> no relation to any of those three things I mentioned. But they, we'd have a, a um, what, was it, what was it called? Um, rhythm Night? Yeah, it's like a recital. Rhythm Night, we play a song or two. Um, sometimes the full song. Some years they'd have us play like a minute of of every of two songs. And so we do stuff like that. We wouldn't be judged. It was just for people to watch the other family and friends of the other uh, drummers at the school. Your, your instructor's there. Uh, it was more for fun. It wasn't like a judging thing. Yeah, when I was in Oneonta, I never played the drums until I went to Oneonta. And I remember trying to play. Uh, I played the first song I ever I ever learned how to play was the Beatles' We Can Work It Out, mm. which is just basic drumming, basic. And I remember walking in there sweating because I never had to play in front of anybody. I never, I never played drums before. And five months of practicing with and learning, I had to be judged in front, in front of three people. Uh, really eye-opening, really cool stuff. I mean, I, I did well. Uh, the next year... Uh, my drumming teacher got got a hernia, mm. so all I did was learn about paradiddles. Oh, so that's great! So my uh, <laughs> my recital was just one page of paradiddles, and they said that's all you're playing. I said that's all I learned, and then the next <laughs> shout out Rob Rob was was the best. Um, next year I had to learn how to play Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. That's fun, yeah. But I played at like not half speed, a little more faster than half speed. But the problem was. When I was playing, I couldn't hear the backing track. No, I, yeah. So that's, I did yeah. not know where I was. And I remember writing an email saying, hey, like, I, I think I did okay, but, but just remember I couldn't hear back tracks. I like, listen, you're fine. We're going to give you whatever. I know you. a lot of students said they couldn't hear it. That's, that pisses me off. No, that happened to me, like, almost every single year, if not every year. It's like, no, met- like, at, le- at least give me a metronome. At least know where, where I am. Yeah, or, like, I don't know, like, get us. Cause like I'd always have my my earplugs in my the high fidelity earplugs with the different cone you know layers Nerd. whatever and I mean, those are really good though you could you could hear stuff but it, it cuts out the high stuff like the cymbal crashes and stuff like that so you don't go deaf but you hear the clarity. How are your ears? Are they good? They're pretty good. I you know I always had tinnitus like the ringing in my ear since I was very young, so I don't. I don't think there's any ear damage. My just... stuff, my my ears are stuffed every day, but it's not like from drumming; it's just from life. My Jeez. my ears are always, 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 always stuffed. Like, oh, it's so gross. It hurt. Like, and then sometimes I'll sneeze and I'll be able to hear for like a second, and then that's it. That's terrible. And then a lot of times, like with my ears, the way they work, it goes to like the loudest. So if I'm if I'm in a car, I'm in a truck, and the and it's really loud, like the truck. I my ears focus on the loud noises, which is really. I should probably go to the doctor for that stuff. Yeah, go to. Uh, I can try. A, I know a good ENT. They're in New Hyde Park, but I but mean, I keep, keep find... going by what what you were saying. Yeah. Uh. So I mean, my ears are pretty good. I mean, I also played percussion stuff. Turn your ringer in... off. Let me do that. I also played percussion stuff in my kung fu school. We'd have the around this time of year. Actually, unfortunately, we couldn't do it due to world events, and we. We would always play the lion dance at different restaurants and places. We went to an architect's office by the Williamsburg Bridge one time, maybe more than one time. And it was fun. But I, I'd usually play cymbal. I'll play the gong and all that. And I always had my ear Bang my ear gong. Points. Yeah. And yeah, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, the beats, the beats just so intense. And, you know, it, it's very dynamic, the music that they play for the lion dance shows. And I mean, I miss doing them. I, I wish we ha- could do it this year, 
but Better it's a lot of fun. But I always make sure my ears are protected, so they're pretty good. Yeah, I wear the drumming headphones you wear, and that's why I play. I, that's why I play really loud because I don't really know how <laughs> loud I play until I started playing without like just the the earbuds. Yeah, that just take out the high pitch stuff. Do you have the uh, the thunder sticks? The you know I got like I MTV got Vader's. Park? Vader's oh. they're coming in actually in a couple days. Oh, that's good. The Vader uh, Vader's a great they, company. They, they discontinued them like the best ones ever. I don't know why they discontinued them. They probably sold it somewhere. Wow. So I had the Guitar Center like I had to buy it there. I don't buy anything from Guitar Center. Yeah, I don't uh, really either do anymore. You, do you know how to read music? Do you know how to read drumming stuff? Yeah, Pro Mark Thunder Rod. Uh, I yeah I I learned drumming. I learned drumming since I was in. It was probably third or fourth grade. Yeah, third grade when I started drums in school, like at band. I mean, can you sight read? Yeah, I could sight read. It's been a while. I'm I'm a little rusty, but like once I get a refresher, I'll be able to do it. Yeah, that's cool. Drumming I want to get back fun. into it. I want to get back into well, it. Well, you got to yeah. call Ed. Like no, I know, and that's the thing. Whenever I call, I'll go to his voicemail. So I don't know what it is. Well, I, I have to like like why am I the liaison? Everything. I, it's not just you, Peter. Sure. Everything that, that that I do, every person I deal with. Anytime I want to hook someone up with somebody else, it always comes down to me being the stupid liaison. Like, I have to, like, walk people to do stuff. I don't understand why no one can just do what they got to do. Okay? It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not you and Ed, because that's a, that, that, that's a different story, because you and Ed, because you call them the wrong happened. time. It just happens. Time. Yeah. But I'm talking about just everything else in the, that I'm doing. No, yeah, you're talking about, yeah, Everybody, it's, <laughs> it's, no one could do anything without, like, me. Like, I, I'm not going to say, no one could do it without that me. I got to set everything up. <laughs> You know, in the mafia, I would be the best man ever. You know, I would be the concierge, whatever that is. I would, and I would never Concierge, kill. Yeah. <laughs> okay, never because they can't do anything without me. They yeah. can't pick up the phone and call somebody without me dialing it and being on being on the phone call. <laughs> I don't know how, how hard is it to tell someone what to do and then they they just do it. Yeah. It's, Why do you have to walk people into it? I don't know. I mean, I, I've definitely been through that where it's just like, all right, you can. I mean. You know how to do this, so you can do this much with that. I don't. I don't really understand. Does it make this, any sense? W- w- what I'm saying is that if you're listening to this, and uh, well, not what I'm doing uh, this year, I'm talking about stuff in like 29. I'm talking about stuff in school. Yeah. I'm not talking about like what I'm doing right now, which I can keep a secret. Uh, no, that 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 needs a third party. But I'm talking about stupid stuff like just doing work is dumb. Like, hey, call call this guy if you want to get you know if you want th- this job. And then they'll always like text me, hey, like especially at Food Network. I had someone, I had some. This one I'm mad about. I had somebody at Food Network. I, I worked at Food Network, and they asked me, hey, do you know any contacts? I said, yeah. I mean, CC me in in the email. And the person says, can you write the email for me? I, I don't know how to write this. And I, I was just like, no, no, I'm not writing an email for you to, for you to get a job. Okay, write the email and CC me, and I'll vouch for you. Yeah. Uh, the nerve, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a job. I mean, I would get everything together. If they want a cover letter, I'll write one up. Sometimes I feel most cover letters, it's just kind of Most cover letters get thrown in the garbage. It yeah, is. It's just busy work. It's just work. busy work to cover, do. Cover letters are, are for the computer, not for the person reading it. Yeah, honestly, like resumes are, are like the best, you know, they tell you what you, they tell people what you need, they need to know. The best is when, like, in such an artistry, you're like a PA, and then you meet somebody. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, just give me your resume. That's the best because you know they're gonna read it and stuff, and you know, you know, you know that it's gonna it's gonna work like that. You know it's gonna work. Sound like a symbol. That was me. <laughs> Into the scene. <laughs> I didn't know so was that. It's cool. Right? Okay. Deneating. But uh, but yeah, if you that's why I really understand why there's like, uh, <clears throat> poor <laughs> people, and then like richer people. It just. All right, I don't know. Maybe not. That's not a good analogy. But people <laughs> that don't get the people that stay at the same jobs, like I get people all the time that they're still PAs, and they say, "Hey, can you get me a, a Food Network gig?" And I go, "What have you done so far?" He's like, "I just do PA work." I go, "Do you make any contacts?" He goes, "No, I just do my work and I leave." How are you going to do any this this industry that that we're in? Is not like a, any other. It's not like a nine to five at a business. You know, it's not like you want to work at a law firm or whatever. So you go and you be and you work there and you work your way up. You have to know people. Yeah, like media stuff, you gotta talk. And that's why people get me mad. Like you know, one guy, you know, in particular, get me mad when he when the guy thinks it's like my degree is just like bull. Hmm. That I can't. One like if for business, wouldn't it be the the best thing to get is a comm degree so you can talk to people. Uh yeah. I mean, if you're you know familiar with the new 
communication technology, the media, baby. When, the media stuff. If you're if you're familiar with that, it's very helpful to, I mean, to have your business progress into you know the 21st century and what it, what's going to provide for us. You know, you need to know this stuff. You need to know how to talk to people, how to reach reach out to people. I mean, that's yeah, that, that's very helpful. I don't think it's a useless degree at all. I mean, you could say that the basic. You know, communications is definitely, is that what you got? You got communications? I got a media study. Well, it's mass comedy. They changed it. It's media studies, uh, media studies, theater. So it's a second degree and then film. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. I mean, that that's a, that's a great degree to have. That's right? what I want. It's like, I want to be, I want to be in the new media industry. Why would I not get that kind yeah, of Yeah, all degree? those things. Theater's great. Film. And I mean, that's extremely useful. I would say that is more useful than a generic communications degree. And I would say a generic communications degree is more useful than that basic liberal arts degree. Well, in Oneonta, they changed it because used to be when I when I was there, my my year before I graduated, uh, it was you were either mass communications or communications. So mass communications, you worked with you worked with cameras, right? And then communications, you just worked with like pen and paper. You just wrote, wrote papers, like r- rhetoric stuff. And then we there was a class called uh, Senior Seminar, and it'd be a culmination of media studies. It'd be called a mass comm and comm. And, they, and the school found out that people in comm didn't understand how to use a camera and that people in mass didn't know how to write a paper. Oh. So they decided just to culminate it and put it into one called media studies, which is the right move. Sure. But the wrong move. Because if you're a person like me that, that okay, I know how to write a paper, I know how to write for PR stuff, let me touch a camera. Now it's a lot harder to get into. Hmm. Mine, I was able to take all the camera classes and all the English classes that I ha- had to do, which is great. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know why people like if they're PA like why they would know at that point to talk to people if they want to like because well, they're know. scared. People are scared to do it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. And and honestly, to be fair though, to those people who are in that situation, in some cases, in many cases, maybe. There are always those productions that like would have like big names on them, even yeah. in those levels, mm-hmm. and they would just have like really like unprofessional people running the show. It's not it's not necessarily the stars at all. In my case, I'm thinking of it's not, but just the people below that, like you know, there's no clear hierarchy. Like people are just using the PAs as slaves, basically, just mm-hmm. sending them out to do whatever. And when it's like, look, I'm not a PA in your department. True. You're not. You have nothing to do with any production department. You're just with whatever. I I, I don't want to be too specific, but that ha- that that does happen with some pe- some uh, some productions, and that's not good. I mean, so I can understand why some PAs would be kind of scared to to do anything really, other than what, exactly what they're told, because it just doesn't feel welcoming. It's like you're just confused. You don't know what's going on. Well, just what what our you know our our shared mentor Frank. Is he mm-hmm. talking about? Yeah. Just when you're on a set, you got you have to be. You're there for a reason. Like when we were doing the West Hampton Beach Pack, the Performing Arts Theater. Yeah. Center. Sorry. That's sure. a theater. Whatever. You're fine. Same thing. Um, we were just shooting a promo, and we were just talking to lady. Now me and Peter are gonna be able to send her a resume and work at the theater as like some do some odd jobs. I know lighting. He knows. He knows audio. We know everything. We both have theater experience. So it's stuff like that. It's not like I'm like on a car dealership. It's like, hey, listen, if you need any work, you know, washing cars. Okay, fine. I'm not going to do that. But it's like, hey, we're in a car dealership. Hey, if you need any work shooting commercials, we're, we're right here. Yeah. I actually had an offer to shoot, like, car commercials for, like, Southampton. and. We're, we're, well, let's do it. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that person never got back to me. What happened? How long ago was this? This was, uh, this was four and a half years ago. Okay, that and, might be a little long. Well, no, I'm just saying that, like, yeah, like people, I don't, I don't know how they, because like they were offering to like have me help them with this, and I don't know, they just don't have, they they have like the looks and the position, whatever. They they look, you know, like they're 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 big shots and stuff, but mm-hmm. they don't, they don't know how to work with people professionally. And then they kind of blame you, hundred percent, when things when things aren't done on time, whatever, like when they. I don't know when they want to do something like they they just blame you when you're waiting on them, like they they can't be wrong so they blame it on you. Is this show funny so far? I didn't laugh once. <laughs> I need Jared here because. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. We need to be funny. Um, Is it funny? 
I don't know. It's more relatable it's, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're talking about we're being. Some of it is funny. I mean, you know. Listen, I think it's funny that you that you ask someone for a job and you ask them to write the email for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would just get everything together. I mean, I feel like high school and even middle school, and you know. Yeah, like how hard all is the it? schooling to that point? I would have known to how to write a letter, get a resume together, <laughs> and stuff like that. Although I will say that. Multiple people have given me their advice on resumes, and they advice is one thing. Listen, advice is different. Yeah. Than doing it for me. Yeah, I, but like I even at at school at BC, like I'd get advice like from the place that you're supposed to Boston get. College. Yeah, Berkeley. You gotta college. say Berkeley College. Anytime you see BC, I think Boston College. Yeah, I mean it's typical, but yeah, CUNY Brooklyn College. Yeah, even like people who are supposed to be. Okay into the you know help you with the resume stuff like that's their job like i don't know they get they they sort of like made my resume for a while like a couple of years just kind of not emphasizing like my skills and the stuff Wait, that i've done what they, what they put like funny like let me let me guess let me guess the skills they put you put hard working hard work team player collaborator and like someone out there fluent in a Russian or something. <laughs> no, um, there wasn't actually a specific skill section the way they formatted it, which was weird because, you know, my cousin and other friends were saying, no, you got to, you know, I know like like for the entry for the Brooklyn College Film Society, which I was president of and oh, vice yeah, president out of. There. I'm sorry, but we got the president of the Brooklyn College Film Club. That's like being the manager at Burger King. A very, very, very prestigious. Very, it very it prestigious. is. No, I who totally... are the Who were the past presidents? Uh, Nancy Pagan. Who's and then, that? Uh, she's a retired lieutenant detective at the NYPD. Okay, so um, she had no nothing to do with the film industry. Uh, All right, pass next. Okay. <laughs> next. Then there was Peter. Well, I don't, uh, I, this guy Carlos. I don't know him. I never okay. talked to him. Uh, but since me, it's been Felicia Big from Baldwin, New York. And what does she do now? Uh, she does movie stuff. She does. Film, she was on that shoot on Staten Island the other week. Was that the one with the paper? You you should tell people uh, about what they wrote. Are you allowed to, you think? Uh, no. Okay. Like, yeah. not in this, I don't know, I mean... No, it was, wait, just, it was, just, it was just a little bizarrely it, it, written, and it was, it was explained oh, later why wait, it was they, bizarrely they, written. Oh, they did? Yeah, they, yeah, I told, tell yeah, me. it was the, the... One of the relatives who was there was, like, telling him to, like, write all the stuff do, do, in. Do it, do, do a little. I mean, it was, it was nothing bad, but it was, like, it was something we'd never seen before. Yeah, it was just kind of bizarre, I mean, and they weren't too familiar with, you know... How to write it? Yeah, like the film stuff and all that. Like, it was they just did, like really just stuff. like the person who wrote it definitely was not a media studies major because did not know how to like to write the paper. When I, I was in my not 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 Peter saying this, it's me saying this because I because I, I read it too to like just see because I'm you know yeah, I'm, I'm Jewish so I'm a lawyer, right? By that, trade, that's how it goes. And that's the way it is. Yeah, yeah. How you know? How you know? This Sorry, is the Peter way. Lewis and Austin Titel. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. Yeah, and. I don't know. I mean, they just explained like it was one of the people in the house that was just like, "All right, look, you have to just make sure this, this, and that's covered." I don't know. There's some what credentials did this and... person have? Well, they they've done they've done movie stuff. They they've done theater. You know, they have a theater degree. And... Who is like the most well known person you've ever worked with? Well known person. Because Frank, yo, you just go. Remember, remember Frank? We were we were just talking right with mm. the we were doing a promo the the other day, and right. our mentor Frank is talking about how uh, he produced a play. He's like, yeah, my friend Chris Walken, and I look to I look to Peter. I go, is that Christopher Walken? He just casually is like, yeah, my friend Billy Joel, my friend Chris, uh, my my friend uh, William Joel, Billy, uh, and uh, Christopher Walken, and I don't know if you know this other guy. It's uh, Q Tarantino. Uh, yeah, I mean we're just buddies hanging out. Well, he didn't say Q Tarantino. That would be funny if he's Quentin Tarantino. It would have been great, but yeah, he was talking about like one of Billy Joel's older bands, where in, like a record or something he has from them. He has a record that. Has William Joel? It's before he was the or organist. Yeah, or, before or pianist or some pianist. I, I'm sure he knows how to play an organ. I mean, whatever he knows his way around the doesn't matter. The keys, it. Keep going. Tickling the ivories, but uh, yeah, I mean, he somehow he met Billy Joel, and yeah, he he worked with Chris for walking at the Actors Studio for Chris quite some time, uh -huh. um, and <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, he's but he's the only person. I was telling my friends this for years, and I told Austin, I'm like. He's the only per like when as soon as he said Chris Walken like ten seconds later I'm like go up to Austin I'm like he's the only person I know in the world who calls him Chris Walken <laughs> like I told my friends that I was like yeah that's hilarious because like it's Chris for Walken like I don't know who Chris Walken is uh, but yeah Walken I mean, here <laughs> but he 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. Now we're getting funny. Here we go. They've they've Got worked with laugh the yeah. They, they've worked with each other, you know, over the years for quite a while. And um, but uh, what was Frank talking about? I'm talking about you though. You didn't answer the question. Who's the most famous person besides me? Okay. Obviously? Well, you know what? Funny that you say that because I was gonna say Christopher Walken. You did work with Christopher Walken. Yeah, I was you an extra. Him? I was an extra. I didn't get to talk to him. It was um. I don't know. It was it was this movie I could talk about now because my scene was actually a deleted scene, and um, I don't know. Wait, is there is there is there? Can I watch this? Uh, let me look it up really quick. So the movie, one of the titles was when I went, and the the title that I got and my sister got going into this. Well, your shoot, sister did did it too. Grace Marie Fong Lewis the third. We were both in it. Yes. Oh. Uh, when I live oh. my life over again was the original title, and the new title's one more time. I kind of, I don't know. Like, um, like the Daft Punk song, R.I.P.? Yeah, or even the, uh, yeah, it's a sad One more week. time. I mean, One, one more, more Time by that. Or um, or uh, One More Time by the, the Real McClans, which is uh, uh, 90s, head, 90s freestyle. My head's hurting when you say that type of stuff. Oh, it's good stuff. It's it's great. I love it. Uh, yeah, Robert Edwards directed it, and... Um, you know, it was it's uh it was in the Hamptons. It was set in the Hamptons, so it was at the Maidstone in Bridgehampton, right? We make that left turn. So when I live my life over again, or one more time, Christopher Walken. Film. Okay. Yeah, I saw it at the Hamptons Film Festival. Were you mad? What 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 did you know? You were cut out of the movie before you watched it. I didn't know. I so mean, were you the whole time like ready to see see your scene, ready to see your scene, and then see you weren't in it? Uh, I mean. It was sort of disappointing, but I didn't really care too much because I was still in it. And I talked to the director, Robert Edwards. He was there. He had some Q and A, and I. But after afterwards, I did talk to him, you know, just one on one, and um, you know, he was a nice guy, and he was saying, "Yeah, it's going to be on the DVD. Like we like that scene. You know, kind of shows this about Christopher Walken's what character." What was the movie about? Um, it was about Amber Heard's character. Uh, okay. Comes from like the city, and she goes home for like some time because I don't know. She has to go away from the. Hustle and bustle. It's one of those stories. And yeah, boring. She's in the Hamptons in like the fall, winter. Um, Why would you be here in the fall and winter? First of all, I'm well, not her family. The movie. Her family. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. First of all, no one comes out here and vacations to hang out with the family in the winter. We all know it's 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 dead right now. It's February twenty fourth. It's n- nice outside. You drive down the block. Nothing's open besides real estate places. So if you want, want to buy a house, come down here right now. Well, that's West Hampton. That's a West Hampton problem. <laughs> Uh, but you're like, well, you're more, you're in West Hampton more, more than I am, like at this point. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know. She, she just wants to sort of like, you know, I don't know, find herself, something like that. So she comes out here. Amber Heard's character. Uh, Amber Heard wasn't in the scene that that I was with, but Hamish Linklater. He's a he's a really pretty famous actor. Is uh, he related to Richard Linklater? I don't know. I could never find that connection. It's probably not that. But um, I always looked for it, of course, because I, I, I like I like Richard Linklater's movies. I like School of Rock. I like um, I, I was okay with Boyhood, but um, yeah, he was known. Hamish is known for playing Matthew Campbell in New Adventures of Old Christine. But uh, that same year, I did that shoot. I actually saw him at uh, Central Park, the Shakespeare in the Park, really? the free show. Much Ado About Nothing, and he was great. I mean, it, it was his. It's it was good. his character. It was his personality, just uh, in a Shakespeare. Show. <laughs> what he was cast to do, I forgot what he did. Oh, he was in the Big Short. Okay, yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah, yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah, Fantastic Four, two thousand five. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and um, so he was there. Christopher Walken was there. Um, other actors were there that are decently well known. And um, uh, so that scene, it was sort of like Christopher Walken's character. Just I don't know, like find something about himself whatever and i don't know like is that paul mccartney because i know paul mccartney you got a key cat outside wait is he out there the cat because he's yeah, staring it's at a you? dark one yeah, yeah oh. it's tuna he likes to sit up there and just look at people oh you, you that's that's adorable just almost curse hey you caught yourself and that's all that matters yeah. but um i don't know about the i'm trying to look for the deleted scene here like it's all, right, uh, it's all right it's all right let's let's move on but is that the maidstone i, I can get the dvd but <laughs> I was yeah, Chris or Walken or Ice T. I don't know who people know more now. Who's more popular? I think people know Ice T more. Okay, the commercials and SVU. Order. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, so yeah, it would be them. Tell the people when you wanted to go meet Ice T, what his publicist said. Well, it's not <laughs> the producer at the beginning of the of the this shoot with um, it was an ad for uh, a car repair insurance. I forgot what it's called, but um, and the producer it's at the called beginning called DGE's Point Insurance Agency. 
no, that's that's your deal. Um, that's that's your your family's gig. But um, DG's point insurance agency, life, auto, business, investments, all in one place. So the producer was saying that the that the production the agents for the agency for Ice T said, look, you know, you know, usually Ice T likes to take pictures with fans and you know talk to them. But in this case, during the pandemic and all this is back in like September or October, um, we can't have you do that, you know. So if you touch anything near him, just tell someone we have to make sure it's sanitized, you know, whatever he does. And how it was funny how it played out. I mean, I ended up getting his Arizona like punch and stuff like that, you know, in the I guess per his writer or something. Um, but at the end of the day, like right before the last scene, the last shot when he was you know, about to leave. One of his friends, one of these hip hop pioneers who was in the commercial was about, was leaving with his wife. And, um, the, he, he was at the, the regular, the, the, the regular people's, you know, concession, you know, the, the food with all the cookies and stuff. And he, he, he basically just goes up there and he's just like, Oh, so uh, what's in the trays here? And, and uh, people are just saying, oh, it's just cookies, you know. And they're telling everybody else, you know, look, make sure you wear a glove, you know, make sure you wear a glove before you hand it to people. Uh, Ice-T just reached into the tray with his bare hand and just <laughs> grabbed it. <laughs> Would you say anything to him? No, I mean... You're I like, Mr. T, what's going on? I don't care. <laughs> Mr. Ice-T. I, I don't care. Ice-T. That... That yeah, all right. That 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 shoot started say, with Ice-T, us. I loved you in, in NWA. My favorite. <laughs> I loved you in NWA. Oh my god. Run DMC, god. my favorite. Started just saying all bands. <laughs> I love you in the Beatles. <laughs> no, I mean the we the, we started the day with rapid COVID tests, which was great. You know, that was that was good. But um, you know, and, and of course we were all negative, so it's good. But uh yeah, I mean at that I, I didn't care. I mean, I'm not gonna tell Ice T that. I'm not I'm not supposed to be near. Are you him. are you more of a fan or do you like him less now? No, I have nothing. I, I, nobody, because nobody told him the, the, the precautions. The, oh god. Well, the nobody told the the casting person who was sort of like you know, telling everyone like the deal about the food and stuff like that. I, I don't know why exactly, but they they didn't tell they didn't get to tell Ice T that because mm-hmm. usually Ice T was in the trailer. I'd either be fire watching the trailer or I was running around. What's fire watch? So fire watching is when like you're looking over the equipment, you're looking over a, a, a set, a, lo- a part of location that nobody else could go into. You know, you monitor. So you were security. You were you were Jair. I was I was uh, yeah I was Jair. I was security at Trader Joe's uh, basically. Uh, all I'm saying is that if if I was one to go rob the set and I saw Peter guarding a tent, it's over, Peter. I'm smashing Peter's face in. I'm grabbing that camera equipment and I'm leaving. As you should. There's not a guy that looks like Peter. I'm not saying he looks like anything, but. Uh, a guy like Peter, I could just know. I already know the way Peter was standing. Peter was standing there, uh, you know, uh, going up and down, kind of, because he does doesn't stand still. And he had his hands in, in his jacket and with the mask on, and probably his sunglasses, probably his aviator sunglasses, right? No, that, I I didn't have them on. Okay, but whatever. But if I just saw Peter, the scrawny kid, you know, scrawny taller kid, come, I smash his face and smash his face and with the craftsman knife, go grab the <laughs> camera equipment, probably take him with me. As a hostage, in case I had somebody took somebody came after me, and <laughs> probably take him out to a nice dinner or something. Yeah, I mean, it's always a nice ending. Did anything bad happen on set? Did anybody get yelled at? Like that's my favorite story. Did anybody get yelled at? Nobody got yelled at. Um, but that's the set I was talking about, where like the hierarchy just was not clear. Um, yeah. you know, I don't want to be too specific. Why not? But it was just for obvious reasons. And, um, I don't know, it, I mean, people were just like, like, you know, telling the PA, certain people were telling the PAs, you know, what to do. And it's like, they weren't like, even to the point of like contradicting what, what the assistant doing? director and the key PA just told me to do. That's my favorite thing. When people that get on set and they're like the same level as me, try to tell me what to do. <laughs> it's my favorite. Who are you? Who are you? Yeah, honestly, like they don't have like control over just any PA. Like th- this person, they weren't in production. They weren't in, you know, they they weren't in that involved in that. But they just so thought what it was they right. say to you, what what they what they tell you. Well, it was a point where it's like they told me, look, could you check if the other PA is fire watching the trailer? And this and other PA told you that. 
No, no, this other person who was not in production at all. Oh, okay. And I'm saying, like, contradicting what the AD... The AD was just on the walkie talking to the key PA saying, look, um, so listen, uh, could, could you just echo when I say action and cut and quiet on the set, you know, rolling, and... Roger, roger. Right, like the ballad words. And... Filoni first. Filoni first. And uh, they said, you know... Got it, you know, copy. And they told you know, and they had to go somewhere, the key PA, so they told me, look, just make sure you echo the AD's, you know. What does orders. echo mean? Like echo, like you say you say it again for them, you, you make it louder, you you make it so louder. Like a baby. Know? So if I go uh, action and someone goes you go action. Because they were inside the garage. This was uh this is the, the, the auto repair What kind of so. walkie talkies do they use? Are they like the really do they actually use walkie talkies or they just text you? No, no it's a walkie talkies. What kind of walk is it like a really cool one? They're not gonna they're not gonna text every time they say action or cut. That'd be ridiculous. But these are really good ones. I mean, you know. Did you ever All right, keep, keep going, then I got one more question for you, and then we'll have to take a commercial break and then move on to sports. Sure. <laughs> so so it was um yeah, so they told me, look, just you know, do just echo what the A D says. The director actually wasn't there. Um they were there remotely. Uh, actually, I was telling Frank about this. Really? And, the director wasn't there? Yeah, they were just there remotely, like on an iPad usually or something. Someone like was just tablet. like, all right, here, I see. Someone was, that's, that's funny. Wow. Yeah. That's a great sketch. Yeah. I mean, that's a great scene. Like, that's a, that's a, write that, write that freaking down. I got, all right. I got you a notebook. I'll give you one into, into my room right after the break. We can, we can write it down. Okay. What a great premise. You know, you go, go on set and you're a PA and like you're the only PA there actually doing stuff because everybody else is remote. He's like a bunch of iPads over the freaking place. Yeah, I mean, no, that, that's actually really great. I mean, that'd be really good. Yeah, because like the director that? wasn't there. Yeah, thank you. And the, the, uh, the, so the AD, you know, was basically, you know, running a lot of the show, which is typical, but, you know, it was, it was a little more responsibility than usual. So it's like, you know, I really have to listen to AD in this case because the situation is just so, you know, it's not good because we already lost the PA because there's like an allergy to something. We didn't know what, but they <laughs> but sent, like it died. They send the guy home like at six thirty in the we morning. We lost one. Some guy robbed its place. Got yeah. stabbed by Craftsman's knife. Yeah, it was like it was like six o'clock in the morning. We got there. That was the call time, and like six forty five about that. That PA was gone, and I found out much later that like they had an allergic reaction to something. I don't know what it was. Yeah, and, it's called to work. And they told them. The, the production, they didn't want to take any chances, you know. So, fine. But, they don't want to so, get sued, pretty so, much. So that just was, say it. So that so we was don't want to get sued. Yeah, I mean, whatever the case. Even if they don't get sued, you know, they don't want, they don't want to deal with that stuff. That's not good. But, you know, so we, we were doing, you know, all that stuff. And, yeah, I... So the, the key PA tells me to, to do that. So I but started doing people that. at home, what's a key PA? They're the head production assistant. They, they tell the other production assistants what so to the do. So the, uh, the head, you know... I can't say the word, but the big cheese. I don't know what to call it. Of, of the so. of the production assistants, sure. and they report to the assistant director or the second assistant director, if they have an underling there. But cool. uh, you know, who, director, the production manager, you know, whatever. Any, anyone in production, you know, they uh, they'll talk to the the key PA, and they so they left. They had to leave, and I started doing Scary. it. I was echoing what the AD said. And then all of a sudden, this other person who I didn't even know, there was no introductions with this person. They just, as soon as like I was like hanging out the walkies, they start like barking orders like, okay, so just write this down and give me that walkie. It's like, all right, hold on a sec. How, how old are these PAs? The PAs, uh, the PA, the key PA and the other PAs themselves, uh, they were about my age. Okay, if I say uh, like they're 40. I'd be some like, of them were older, maybe 30, maybe. It's, you know, it's hard to tell. Facial hair and stuff like that, it's hard to tell. But... They probably uh, thought you were like fourteen. No, but they they all had the information. But the so this other person who was older, maybe forties, maybe fifties, uh, they start barking words at me as soon as possible. Write this down. Give me that walkie. And you know, I'm like, um, okay. Do you have you know what, what's your name and, and position or so? Not I don't even know how I said position, but just like the name. Um, and that was just the whole trend the whole day. That was like a thing. And I had. I had no, I mean, it's just like, okay, I guess I'll listen to you because everyone's sort of telling me to. Um, so later on the day, the key PA leaves me off with those orders, and I start doing them, and then all of a sudden, that person comes up to me and tells me, yeah, it's very true, and tells me, look, could you check the trailer over there to see, you know, if, if the other PA is fire watching? 
And I, I'm trying to explain to them, like I'm saying, like succinctly and loud enough through the masks and everything, you know, look, the AD and keep it, I'm supposed to be echoing what the AD says, you know, with somebody doing it. And it was like back and forth, like, what, what, what? And they're, and all of a sudden they thought that, what? like, what? Yeah. And they thought all of a sudden that I, like, I was saying that they weren't watching it, which I don't know how I would know that because I was with them the whole time for like the past 20 minutes. Um, so I'm like, no, but is someone going to be echoing what the AD says? And then they said, no, just go check the trailer. And it's <laughs> like, uh, okay. Cause like, you know, the, the AD specified, look, just be quiet about it. Okay. You know, me, you know, the, you the, shut your mouth and do your job. No, like, like be quiet about like when you echo, you know? Okay. So it's like, if I'm going all the way to the trailer, I can't be quiet about it. No one's going to hear me. Everyone's in front of the garage. Cause that's where they're shooting inside the garage. And I'm going to be yelling, and that's not that's specifically what the AD said not to do. And this person was just adamant about me going, like, you go over there if you care so much. Like, come on. Like, and that stuff just annoys me. Like, that's just wrong. So if you're, if you're still listening to this comedy show, uh, to PA or not to PA, that is a question. Uh, I don't know. PAing is fun, I guess. It's so much more, it's so much more fun being the AD. I, I don't mind like PAing. I usually like PAing. I usually like drive, you know, being the driver and stuff. Like that's fun, the driving PA. Um, all that's fun, but until it's not fun. Because some people just like to use you when they're not even supposed to. You know? Use and abuse. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's 1 54 p.m. here on the East Coast. We're going to take a quick commercial break, come back at you with some sports stories, come back at you with only some comedy, but still listening. Thank you. This is uh, How You Know. A comedy radio show starring Peter Lewis and Austin Titel. What a happy day it is right now. It's Wow, what a great email. I just, uh, I'll give you a little premise here. So me and Peter, we like to play the GTA online. Me, Peter, uh, we we're playing one day. We we're trying to do a heist, and we had to do a lobby of four people, you know, oh, random you people. Turn off the... Yeah, I did it. Random, uh, a bunch of ram bobs. And usually with random people, I never, I never like... Invite him to the party. I just want to talk to my friends. But for some reason, Peter really wanted to invite this guy. And his name was Josh. And we found the only person, not the only, but one of the people on Xbox that wrote a script. And he said it like to for us. for movies. For a movie. A movie script. That's what we do. We produce stuff. And what was the movie called? I like the title. Frozen Stiff. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him. I heard that and I started, started dying. What well, Was it about again? Uh, it's like a, it's like a, like a zombie thing. You know, one of those zombie movies, but who cares? But let me tell you right now, we got to talk and he's from Alabama. Uh, he was in the, he was in the Air Force. He works for, uh, now the Department of Defense. And he was telling us how he had court, uh, coming up. So today was his court date. Cause, uh, he got pulled over. He had weed possession in it, in his, uh, in his, um, vehicle. Vehicle. Um, first of all, pulling over a veteran. Okay. But trying to book a veteran, shouldn't let him home, whatever. The guy's a vet. All right, so it's really messed up what happened. But he should not have had weed in the car, obviously. But it's still weed. Like, it's not like crack or something. It's a non-violent it's thing. Like, I don't, you know, that shouldn't be. Uh, so basically he kept saying that, guys, I might, I might go to, what are you saying? Guys, I, I might go, here's like a deeper, guys, I might go to jail on yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, I can't. Guys, I'm not uh, going to jail. I think they're going to say I either one year in jail or pay like a $10,000 fine. Well, he said $1,000. $1,000 fine. And, um, Thank you. Sure yeah. It, but okay. And I mean, how we met him was like even... It was even more bizarre. I mean, you know, we were just on the same mission, stuck on it for like 10 tries, and we were... I we're... think we should take the guy, put him over the cliff. <laughs> well, that was a different... That was later on, but, I mean, how we met him, we already had this other guy in the party, um, you know, and they were good. Uh, they were all, all four of us who were pretty good, you know, into it. But, yeah, and then we started talking to Josh, and, yeah, he, he wrote a script for, like, a movie, and, you know, we all... <laughs> he sent it to me over email... And, did you uh, read the whole thing? Be honest. Did you read the whole thing? I didn't read the whole thing. No. Yeah, I didn't read the whole. I remember but, one page. I was like, all right, this is like I'll okay. get to it. I'll know. get to it too eventually. Maybe five years, but I just you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's based off of like people he knows. You know, mostly in Alabama. I mean, he was stationed in Japan for the Air Force for like a number of years, and uh, he has a lot of stories from that. But yeah, we just got a, a mail from that. That guess who, he, it's the subjects like guess who's not going to jail. He gave away it though. He gave he gave away the 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 whole thing in the subject which is next time don't write that but go on yeah i mean just guess who's not going to jail i mean that's funny enough but yeah just like how guess who ain't in jail guess who ain't in jail there you go 
And um, yeah, so it worked out, and he only had to pay five hundred dollars, and it's also going off his records. I'll tell you because he's a vet. That's exactly why they saw they saw he worked with part of the fence. He saw that that he he was stationed where where he was. But let's get a round of applause for Josh, Captain. What is he? Captain One on Xbox. Captain Jish. Captain Jish, baby. Like Captain Jish. Like here we. Like Captain yeah, Crunch. Captain, not like, even Captain. Like Captain Crunch. Yeah, Captain Crunch. He's funny. All right, let's go on to the sports. Uh, today's a sad day. And we're just talking about a good day, but sad day for Yankee fans, everybody out there. Uh, Aaron Judge's gap in his teeth is no longer. Um, he's going to have a bad season. <laughs> he's going to have probably the worst season of his life. That's what this means. I played baseball all my life. I was the best hitter on every single team. Okay, may not have been the best fielder. May not have been the best, you know, thinker. May not be the best, you know, guys with the hands. But I was always the top hitter. Always, no matter what. And let me tell you right now, you need to know balance. And he's never hit without his teeth being with gaps. Okay? <laughs> and because of that, he will have the worst season of his life. Why? He's never hit. He's never hit without a gap in his teeth. That's like changing the whole stance. It's like going from righty to lefty. How are you going to change anything? He's a great hitter. Why would you change anything? Yeah, you're going to wake up in the mirror and see your ugly <laughs> smile. But you're getting paid, man. Why would you do that? Now everything's going to get messed up. Your whole equilibrium, all your, your stance, you got to change everything. you got to go back to the minor leagues. If I'm the Yankees, I'm yelling at them. How do you fix your gap? It works. It makes you more aerodynamic. The fastball isn't as fast because when it comes at you, the wind is in your teeth. Okay? Yankee fans, how do you feel? About Aaron Judge changing. This is like changing his whole way of playing. He's not playing outfield. Now he's playing shortstop. Okay? Now he's going to bat lefty. All right? As a hitter, you have a stance. Okay? And throughout the season, you have to make adjustments. But never change your teeth. It works. The hitting coach wasn't like, yeah, Aaron, the reason why you're having an offseason is because you got a gap in your teeth. You got to change it. And he's going to have the worst season of his life, okay? I don't know how you do that. You've never hit without your tees like that. It's not like you started the season, you know, batting your hand. Your hands are, are, are a little bit closer to you. Your hands are a little bit this way. Your feet are a little, little bit this way. No, nah, this changes the whole game, dog. I, I, I bet you, I bet you when, the Yank, when he comes back for spring training, when we watch it, he's going to be a lefty. Because you can't change. What, would you, if you were a star hockey player, Right, and you and you never and you had a gap in your teeth, but you're getting paid like that, and you've never played without having a gap in your teeth. Would you change it? Jeez, uh, it's tough for me to say, not being in that situation. Uh, I mean, this whole thing with Judge might be Samson's hair, like in the Bible. What is that? Samson. I'm Jewish. Well, I don't read the Bible. Well, it's the, this is the Old Testament, I think. Uh, whatever. Maybe not, but uh, uh, the Corinthian. Um, yeah. So, uh, Samson. Um, so he, he had long hair, he's very strong, and then like in his sleep, yeah, the Hebrew Bible, uh, he he had his hair cut off, and then he lost his strength because he lost his hair. That's what I'm saying. It's like you're changing a big thing here, okay? It, you're changing your whole way of life now. Now people, like, maybe that's what drove him to become the best hitter was because people used to make fun of him because of a gap, a gap in his teeth. Now he's not going to have that drive. Now he's going to be complacent. Now he's like, look how good looking I am. Look at this. Look at this. I'm getting paid, and I got perfect teeth. It's going to get to his head. He will have the worst season of his life because he changed his teeth. Teeth are a big thing. You know, if people don't know Peter, Peter always brings breath mints everywhere he goes. Why is that? Because you work on film when you get close to people and stuff? Yeah, I just people. I, I did it since freshman year of high school. I'm like, you know what? Even I started even in the middle school. You know, just like I, I don't want my breath to smell. It is the worst when when you're when you're doing that that type of stuff. But uh, do you agree with me that like, I I know people might think, oh, you're crazy. But I'm telling the truth. He's never had perfect teeth. Yeah. He's always had the gap in his teeth. It's built into his stance. If you see the way, if you see the way his his head is, if you see the way he looks at the baseball, he has that teeth sticking out. It's like Chris Durst. Okay, has his teeth sticking out right, perfectly, perfect. And now he's gonna be showing off his smile. 
He's going to be getting up there, smile to the pitcher. Hey, what's up? Look at our perfect team. Smile to the umpire. Smile to the catcher. The umpire's going to go, look at this guy. He's got everything. He's got a perfect perfect body. got the perfect stand, perfect hitter. Now he's got perfect teeth. Nah, everything I'm calling a strike. It's over. <laughs> Things change and you get good looking. Okay? It's going to get to your head, Judge. That's I don't true. understand why you did that. You weren't an ugly dude. I barely noticed it. Okay? <clears throat> I don't know who told you to do that, but you now change your stance. Yeah, if okay? it was his agent, you got to fire the agent. Like, that's it. He's only, I thought you said Asian. Like you you got to fire Asian. the Asian. <laughs> no, you got to fire the agent. Uh, that's a bad call. You know, I, I have to say, when it comes to just the most minute, like, physics and pressure, like, air pressure and stuff like that, and also the whole factor of, like, laying your looks get to your head, it, it got to his head. It got to his head already. Changed this, and I, yeah, I think Austin's right. I don't think he's going to be the same. He will not be the same. Uh... Anybody that that played baseball, anybody that was a sorry, not played baseball, anybody that was a good hitter, a smart hitter. Okay, I'm not I'm not seeing a natural guy. I'm a smart hitter, a guy guy that knows, guy that anticipates the ball, the guy that knows when he swings and he hits a ground ball at shortstop, he's ahead of the ball. The guy knows that when he fouls it right back to, to the catcher, right back to the backstop, that he's that he's a little little bit late, almost on it. Mm. I'm talking about th- those kind of guys, and those kind of guys right now are thinking, man, Aaron Judge. Just messed everything up. It's like chain. It's like the Beatles going. Listen, we're not gonna be a rock band anymore. We're gonna. We're just gonna be a Beethoven. We're just gonna do that time. We're gonna do. We're, we're, we're gonna do classical. This is your bread and butter. And every every good hitter knows if you're on a roll, if you're getting paid, if you're hitting good, you don't change a thing. The worst hitters are the ones that that do really well and they overthink, and they change everything. Oh, you know, I, I struck out to twice. Oh, you know what? I gotta start stepping earlier. I, I'm gonna start stepping into the ball. No, no, he's had off debt. Aaron Judge, it's over. <laughs> Bye. Have fun being a Red Sox. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> you might end up. You might end up on the worst team, the Mets. <laughs> you might end up on the Mets. Cause look at those guys. They're ugly. Oh, no. You might be the best looking guy. You might become the best looking guy in baseball. <clears throat> but let me tell you, Ryan, you're gonna be the worst hitter. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on. Right. So what's next up on uh, the... hockey? Okay. So NHL news. Well. So I just read that the Montreal Canadiens coach, Claude Julien, who used to be the Bruins coach. It's funny, he played for the Canadiens, he played for the Bruins. That's one of the biggest rivalries in sports, Montreal and Boston. And, um, you know, he was, co- he was coaching Boston, now he's coaching Montreal. Uh, they fired him, and now... Uh, and, and, oh, God, associate coach Kirk Muller as well. Okay. And the, I mean, yeah, that's that's big news. I mean, they were had a losing stretch, but, I mean, they were doing pretty well. Like, they were, like, one and two in the North Division for this season's realignment. They, they cool. realigned so that you only play within your division. The North is just Canadian teams, all seven. And then the there's, like, the East, there's the, the Central, and then the West. And they're doing they're doing all right, but the um, I don't know they had a losing stretch, so it's like all right, let's uh, fire the the coach, the head coach, and associate coach, and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, they got a lot of great young talent. So what do you think about it? Um, the firing? Yeah, uh, Speedy out there says it's a terrible move. Do you agree? Speedy says, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I I it might be too it might it might be cutting off your nose. To spite your face. What does that mean? Is like, that like Aaron Judge in his teeth? Uh, so it kind of sounds like. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? Uh, it's kind of just like you know, you kind of, you kind of just, you know, you ruin everything when you're lo- when you're looking to fix one problem. You kind of take everything along with that fix, whether it is or not. Uh, so that's the idea. I mean, it's not. I don't know. It, I, I thought they're doing great. I, I hate Montreal Canadiens. I hate their I hate the you I hate, hate this team. You hate, you hate Canadians? I hate the Montreal you Canadians. Love CCM. How do you hate the Canadians? <laughs> I mean they're from Quebec too. But um I mean I no, I, I don't like the the Habs. I don't like the Montreal Canadiens, also known as the Habs or Le Habitant. But, but, no, keep going. but they I don't know, their fan I, I don't like their team, I don't like their fans. Their fans are obnoxious wherever they go, wherever whatever team they're playing on the road, there's a million of them. And they're just the most obnoxious people. They don't want to shut up. They just think, you know, they can do whatever they want. And that annoys me. So, you know, but, I mean, funny story. The last game at the Barclays Center and the, you know, with the Islanders that I went to was a Montreal game in March of last year. 
right before the lockdowns. Actually, a uh, fun fact, yesterday marked one year last time I was at an Islanders game and there was people there. Wow, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, that was the, the San Jose game that yeah, we were both at. Yeah, you were there, at. too. Yeah, it's, and I, we, we, we were both at the same game. Yeah, I, was I got my, free tickets. I was with my friend from Brooklyn College, and he was there, free tickets. And um, San Jose Sharks, and yeah, I, I like the Sharks in the East, I mean West. Um, but, I mean, I don't know, this move, it, it, c- could it work? Maybe, but I feel like it's just a little too drastic of a measure to do right now. I mean, Michelle Therrien... Um, Michelle. The uh, the coach. I mean, I'm sorry. The GM. Uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of uh, no. He's the he's he's with the Flyers now. I'm thinking of um, Mark Bergevin, the GM, the general manager for the Canadiens. I mean, he's been good. He's done a lot of moves that people are like, "Why are you doing that?" Like trades and stuff. And it ended up they'd be okay. They they it'd work out for Montreal. Um, you know, every single time basically. I feel like, and he. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, this could be good. I mean, they have really good players. They got Nick Suzuki. They got um, uh, Jeff Petrie, who, who's been around for a while. But he's actually related to the Detroit Lions, um, um, Tigers. Yeah, if no one, you turn to me. You should turn to Cam. Man, he had the biggest eyes when, when he said that. <laughs> no, no. Um, Jeff Petrie, uh, his uncle, I believe, is um, on the, the, the was on the Detroit Tigers. Um, really? Really? Yes, his father Dan Petrie was a pitcher. Oh wow! And yeah, he, he won the World Series ring with Detroit in '84, 1984. Cool. And uh, yeah, Jeff Petrie, 33, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh wow! Yeah, he's a Michigan boy. Nice. But uh, yeah, he's been on the Canadians for as long as I can remember. The Canadians. Um, and they're, I mean, they they got talent. I mean, Carey Price is probably the best goalie of the twenty the twenty tens. Uh, and he's still amazing. I mean, they, they just stole that series against Pittsburgh in um, the last playoffs in the bubble. Uh, Kyle uh, Speedy says Theron was a former coach before Julian. Exactly. That's what that was. That's how I got confused. Exactly. See, you yeah. know nothing. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff I don't know. But I, I just get m- names mixed up, and they're all French, and it's like, oh, what do I, you know, what's, what's going on? But, um, yeah, so I we'll see how that goes. Again, I mean, Mark Bergevin has surprised the hockey world, the especially NHL world, on more than more than once in the past since he's been GM. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's fun to watch them, even though I don't like them. I think like lately, like that playing round with Pittsburgh in the postseason last year, and just since then, you know, playing the other Canadian teams, they are fun to watch. No matter what you see about them or how I feel about them. They are fun to watch. It's like how you want the Mets to be good, so it's not, you know... Yeah, so I so want it. them to be good. Yeah. So it's be interesting to see Subway Series. Exactly. You know, I should not be like, oh, we're playing the Mets Subway Series. All right, I'm going to go, like, play Xbox. I'm going to go play GTA with Captain GS, and maybe he'll go to jail again or something. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I want the Mets to be good. I want them so they to be better than the Yankees. <laughs> Well, we you, all know that never happened. Did you want them to win in 2015? Hell no. Okay. No way. I don't want them to win the World Series. I want them to be good. Okay. Because, you know, typical Met fans are go, ah, oh, we won, we won, look how good we are. Oh. You know what? I, I made that voice because it's like they won't win until we're in the old folks' home. <laughs> I remember back in uh, 2094 when the Mets sweeped, uh, Mets sweeped the Yankees in five uh, 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 I can't breathe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my my cousin Al, uh, the favorite child we were talking about on a previous episode, uh, he, you know, my mother uh, used to watch him. He's from my father's side. Give, give impression of, of your mother, please. Yeah, so she was watching. I was watching Albert, you know, Al Albert. He's the best. I love Albert. <laughs> he's really good. You know, he's my favorite child. All my other kids suck. Albert was the best. So um, they're they're watching him again because you know basically they raised him my my family, um, my mom and you know my father, uh, and he's a you know he's a distant cousin my father's side, and you know he's watching the Mets game he's from Queens he's from Ozone Park like my mom, and uh, he was with my grandma and my and uh, uh, my grandma would be like you know they were in the World Series that year um eighty six or something. And um, what the Mets? Yeah, one was it eighty seven? I, I don't know. I guess I'm not a Mets fan. Well, I mean, but they only won Speedy two. He probably knows. They only won two. They only won two. You know, World Series. Uh, they were good ones. You know, um, but yeah. Uh, and my grandma would just be like, 
uh, you know, kind of, you know, like what you do when you're watching a game, you know, and they're messing up, whatever, you know. Oh, I don't like you, Strawberry. My grandma. I've met Darryl Strawberry. He's the man, like, oh, multiple times. That's great, yeah. I don't know why, because he's a Yankee, too. He was, later on, yeah. And, um, I mean, that was a weird move, apparently. People talk about the Mets fans, but... Uh, say, what did I say? Typical Mets fans. Always blame everybody. <laughs> I mean, hey, then uh, Cano went to the to the Mets. Um, uh, re- look what happened. He was a star of the Yankee, and now he's, now he's on P... PT, whatever, PSDT, I forgot what they're, the steroids, his bicep is talking. That's how they found out. They found out he was in steroids because he was in the locker room, and the bicep was talking. Oh, God. It was crazy. That's terrible. Yeah, 86 uh, World Series, um, and, uh, you know, the Red Sox. But, yeah, the uh, and my, my cousin Albert, though, my grandma was saying, oh, I like you, Strawberry. Like, Albert, I, I think, I don't know if... <laughs> I think Albert thought like she was talking about for a second like actual strawberries, so it's like I like Typical strawberries. Mets fans. See what happens when he was like he was like three years old or something like that, and I like strawberries, and like my my family always tells that story, <laughs> um, but you know I mean he was you know he was good, um, great player, and great, uh, great player, great fielder, great uh, hitter, and great Coke snorter. <laughs> I mean it's the best called. of the best here, you know. But how you know? But yeah, I mean, I so I mean back to that. I mean, you know, I just like games that are fun to watch. I hate Philadelphia Flyers. I hate Pittsburgh Penguins. Why? When what do you hate the Penguins? Because they marry Super Mario Lemieux, the owner and stuff. You know, he's the well, owner. Why do they call him Super Mario Lemieux? Well, Super Mario, because in the eighties, you know, with all Gretzky, like it was them two, them two who were like amazing. Uh. Um, you know, Mario unfortunately was injured a lot, uh. and he had he had a cancer scare. He was gone for three years. Um, you know, then he came back, a game back with Pittsburgh, and they were in Philadelphia, and he was back on the ice, and you know, uh, Philadelphia gave him a bigger ovation, you know, uh, for you know beating cancer and being back, you know, because uh, you don't want to see that stuff happen. It's not pretty. It's not good for anyone, and uh, you know, I, and he played very well. I mean, he didn't just come back; he played very well. Um, it's funny though, because uh, the other day, you know, the Islanders are playing Pittsburgh again. And Crosby got his thousandth game as a penguin. Nice. And he's the first penguin to do that because Mary was injured so much. You know, he got cancer. He had all that stuff going on. Um, otherwise, players who play for Pittsburgh, they usually leave, you know, later on in their careers or something like that. They wouldn't stay, you know, um, that long. And, uh, but, you know, they, um, uh, so I don't, I don't like him because, I mean, yeah, their fans are obnoxious. They, uh, Crosby gets just whines about stuff, and even the, the the NHL had the World Cup of Hockey in 2016, and they interview, interviewed Yevgeny Malkin, uh, the other center, um, the second line center on Pittsburgh, about you know playing against his teammates. Like, yeah, well, you know, I don't like you know I I don't like playing against him because he just whines too much. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious because that's what everyone complains about. The two of them, for that matter, I mean, they just complain about stuff and. You know, when they were not playing well, they just start acting all goony. You know, they start, you know, you know, trying to like, you know, high sticking people, you know, cross checking all that stuff. And, and they just annoy me. And like uh, t- over 10 years ago, there was um, the fight night between the Islanders and the Penguins. Basically, the league fight was just. Night. You got to watch the video. You, like, you would love it, Austin. Oh, yes. But it was because because those games and stuff like that, like the Penguins were getting away with a lot of stuff. And. The 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 Islanders were fed up with it basically, and they you know they started you know fighting them, you know in the whole game it was like insane, it was absolutely insane, and uh, the only players. What year was this? Uh, twenty eleven. You watched this? I, I wasn't Live? I wasn't watching it no, uh, but you know I, I heard a lot about it so ever sad. since, and uh, I mean and I've watched the video you know years almost a decade ago, but it um, it was a big night. It was a tr- kind of a turning moment for the Islanders at that time because they. They haven't been in the playoffs for like seven years, I believe, at that point. And, you know, they overall, since like Mike Milbury was the GM and stuff, they the nineties and since then they, they weren't they didn't have a great reputation. Um so they kind of stood up for themselves and they had a big fight. And there were three players that were on either that were that were present for that game on both teams. It was like Josh Bailey and um what's his name? Uh oh my god, I'm blanking right now. It was Josh Bailey, Chris Letang. Chris Durst. No, uh, Chris was on the Penguins and Josh Bailey on the Islanders, and um, yeah, so whatever. And it it was absolutely nuts. And I mean, it was it was absolute it was 
it was a turning point for the Islanders ever since then. Because then a couple years later, they got in the playoffs. They they played the Penguins really well. They they got to six games. Everyone thought, oh, the Penguins are going to sweep the Islanders. That didn't happen. But you know when a sweep between the two did happen? In 2019, the playoffs between the Islanders and the Penguins, when the Islanders swept the Penguins, because they were doing terrible. You know Their GM, Jim Rutherford, who's now gone, stepped down, uh, made some really bad moves. And, um, you know, so I, it's, it's been, it's been tough, you know, but, uh, it's been a lot better though, also since 2013 and they're doing really well. I think they, they possibly could win the cup. I know I was saying in a previous episode, the avalanche maybe are the favorites. I'll openly acknowledge that because they're so good, but. You know, no one's sleeping on the Islanders. Like, nobody. Like, anyone who's smart knows Only Ranger about. fans are sleeping on the Islanders. <laughs> Only Ranger fans are sleeping on the Islanders. We should call up Caden and ask him what he thinks. Oh, you but... know what? I'm going to text him and ask him. Yeah, keep, 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 keep calling <laughs> So, you know, I mean, there's all that. And there, it's a bright future. And I, I think, you know... Um, so, what I was saying before, though, I do like watching the Penguins and the Flyers play each other. Because I know... It's a big rivalry game. It's going to be fun. No matter what you call it, I hate them both. Let the arena collapse on, on both of them, you know. Pox on both their houses. But they are fun to watch against each other. You know, Rangers, Flyers, you know, whatever. I'll watch, any, you know, I'll watch anything that's fun. And that even goes for Montreal Canadiens. As much as their fans have... How do you say it? Canadiens? Canadiens. Canadiens. It's, you know, in French, whatever. But, um, what are you, you going to ask him if I get him on the phone, Caden? What are you going to ask him? What am I going to ask him? I yeah. don't know. What do you What do you think about the Islanders? You know, yeah. how do you, they're fu- they're okay, in the right. near future. You're right. You're right. All right. Keep keep going. I think okay. he's going to say okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, you know, and they've been playing well. They they've done. They won against Buffalo the other day, the other day and they're an up and coming team, like I said before. And you know, tonight they play. I'm sorry. Tomorrow night they play Boston. Boston Bruins, and they, I think still to this point, uh, Boston played their outdoor game this past weekend. They beat the Flyers. I think it was like 7-3. Did you know that people thought they were actually on the lake, not yeah. next to the lake? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it's funny because uh, they had an interview with um, the Avalanche. It was Pierre-Edward Belmar. Um, he's like Caribbean, but like he was born in Paris, I think. And, um, and then... Um, I'm going to try to get on the phone. Keep okay. on going. Okay. And uh, Andre Burakovsky, who won the cup with the Washington Capitals in 2018. And, yeah, so they were interviewing about, about like, the Lake Tahoe game, and, and Pierre Everett Belmar is like, All right, here we go. I got oh, him. I Kaden. got him. Okay, Caden. Okay, All right, can you hear? Can hey, this sound all right? Hey, Caden. All right, ask him, Peter. What, what do you want to ask him? Caden, so we're on the show right now. We're live. No, no, foul, no foul language. So... Speak louder, Peter. So, Caden, so no, no foul, no foul language, okay? I just have a question for you. We're on the, we're on the air right now, and I, I wanted to, to ask you, where do you think the Islanders are going in the near future? How do you think they're gonna do? In the near future, I think they'll be good. Okay. Oh come on! What kind of answer is that? Yeah, you're a Ranger fan. What? They have, they have a good young talent. Like who? Barzell. Is he good? He's amazing. Well, P- yeah. you, you missed it. P- Peter, was, Peter was just saying how Ranger fans are the only people that think the Islanders will I didn't say that. You said that. You said that, Austin. Don't get me. <laughs> Austin <laughs> said that. <laughs> he said it. He said, he said Ranger fans suck about the Islanders. Are you oh, watching Peter, this, people? Peter, Peter's quote was, Peter's quote was, and, and, and I quote, Ranger fans aren't true uh, New York fans aren't true Ranger fans because the only team they should be rooting for is is the Islanders. <laughs> why are the why are the Rangers better than the Islanders? They're not right now. I mean, for I mean, come on, you don't like the Islanders. Come on, give me some break. I, like, I like the organization better. I like the players better. When I was a kid, the Rangers were amazing, so that's why I grew up watching and liking to watch because they won all the time and they went to the playoffs like I don't know how many years in a row, like twelve years in a row or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's the difference between the Knicks and the Rangers in terms of MSG teams. Like the Rangers did make the playoffs. What do you? What do you? How do you think the Rangers are going to do this season? Mm, probably not good. <laughs> it's not looking good, at least. Why? 
D'Angelo. Uh, they had a terrible start this season. None of their star players are scoring, and now they have injuries. Panarin just left on personal leave. Who knows how long he'll be gone for. Yeah. And so I don't you, know. They're, just not, they're not playing like they were last year at the end of the season. Right now, you have a chance to talk to people that like the Rangers and the Islanders. What are you going to say to Ranger fans out there? What, what, what is your one thing you want to say to Ranger fans? I have no idea. I'm Rangers gonna... are better than Islanders. There we go. Okay. I was about to give. I was about to give away your phone number if you didn't. If you didn't do something right, I was about to give away his phone number. Oh Insane. my god. Yo, we were. Oh, Caden, we got we got good news. We got good news about Captain. He's not going to jail. He he just has to pay five hundred dollars and it wipes him off his record. He's got an email from him. <laughs> Yeah, he emails us. Here, wait. I'm gonna he emailed you. me and then I forward to Austin. To you. I'm going to forward you the email later. Oh, dude. He's, he wrote, he wrote. guess who ain't in jail? Guess who's not going to jail? That be, uh, would be me. Guess who goes home and pays like $500 and also go in and get it removed from my record? He has no punctuation. It's just a run-on sentence. He might not know how to write, but he's oh not going to jail. God. <laughs> oh, my God. That's good. All right. Look, maybe he won't lose his job. Yeah, hopefully. That'd be funny. All right, have fun painting. All right, I will. Thank you. That was good. Yeah, Caden's a good guy. I like him. He's honest. He speaks his mind. You know, he doesn't get, you know, wrapped into what you want to get him into. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we have to deal with you. What? I, what you, you, try, you try to do Howard's stuff. <laughs> and we have to say. It's because you, it's funny that it way. How funny. much no, funny would it, would it be if you said, no, yeah, is, the outdoors no, suck. No, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's a comedy show. I get it. Thank but, um, you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're the best voice of reason ever. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you don't even know where we're on a show. It's like, oh, you get us like, uh, come on. Come, why don't you keep coming late? How about that? How about you keep coming late? Yeah, Maybe will, that's I the will, move for you. Yeah. But uh, I was saying, though, that you know they were interviewing Pierre-Edward Belmar and Andre Burakovsky on the Avalanche the other month. Wait, uh, uh, Speedy says, Avalanche was my pick at the start of the season. I have them versus the Hurricanes. Oh, okay. Hurricanes, because they're doing pretty well. The West Ham to Beach Hurricanes? I didn't know they were in the NHL. Yeah, right? No, no, no. Canes, man. But, um, I mean, Florida Florida Panthers, they look good, too. I mean, because Tampa Bay, they just won the Cup this past season. And they're, I don't know, they have some players out for the rest of the season. Like that, you know, at least what they say. And um, I don't know. But I feel like Florida could take the big step. You know, it's funny, because the last time they made it, uh, to the finals was against the Avalanche in 96, I believe. And that was uh, their GM was Bill Torrey, the Islanders GM that got them the dynasty years, 19 consecutive playoff victories and four cups in that time. And um, they, that no, no other sports team in North America at least has ever done. And Bill Torrey brought the, the Panthers to the finals in like, I think three years. And he brought the Islanders to the finals in eight years, something like that. And, it, it, I mean, it's a great story, you know. Um, but Florida could be really good this year. I mean, they have really good players, and they're playing well. I mean, I've been watching them over the years, and they, they, they're, they're young talents developing now. Speedy says Nikita Kuchubov 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 will be back for the playoffs, though. Okay. We'll see how that goes because he was amazing in the playoffs. Him and Hedman. You know, my dad even noticed, like, in 2016 against the Islanders and the Lightning, you know, Victor Hedman was the guy, the defenseman. He was the guy that like owned everybody like he was he was just in charge when he was on the ice uh and he ended up being the con Smythe, the the playoff mvp winner and uh well deserved i mean headman hell, heck of a player and um so i mean right so anyway the avalanche were they were getting interviewed by the media the other month uh andre burkowski pierre edward belmar and Pierre Edward Belmore was saying, yeah, you know, I can't wait, you know, because growing up, whatever, I, I always want to play on the ice where hockey was meant to be played, where it was originally played, a lake. There's kitty cat again. Kitty cat again. This cat loves it. Hi, yeah. Tuna. Tuna's great. Bye, Tuna. We love Tuna. So, uh, and, and Pierre's He's talking trash, about... though. What? I had to pick up all the trash because this guy eats through my trash. That's oh, terrible. But uh, Pierre Edward Belmore was talking about how like, he's excited to play on the lake, on the ice, on the frozen lake. And then Andre Burakovsky interrupted him, you know, right next to him. He was just like, no, no, we're, we're not playing on the lake. We're playing next to the lake. And then Pierre's just like, oh, that just ruins everything. He said that. He just said that. That just ruins everything for me. Wow. That's great. <laughs> that ruins all the fun for me. 
But yeah, I mean they had they had kayakers in the game. That's like that's like when we have a good show and we found out only like four people were watching it. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, I mean, uh, so the only two I think this is still true. The only two regulation losses, you know, not overtime losses where you get a point, but the only two regulation losses where the Bruins did not get a single point was against the New York Islanders. So that's the matchup going into the, tomorrow night. Let's see if the Islanders could win. Again, whether it's in regulation or overtime against Boston, because uh, that's a pretty significant record because the Bruins are up top, and they've been up top of the division for a while. And it's probably the toughest division in the East. So, How you know? How you know? All it's right, I think that, that, that was pretty good for hockey. All right, let's move on to the other stories. Uh, big story here, Tiger Woods crash. Uh, did you see the crash? You see that? What happened I saw some pictures. Here? I didn't see anything sp- crazy. more specific Crazy. Hopefully that. he's okay. You know, one of the best... Uh, golf players, uh, yeah, people that play golf. Are they called golf players, I guess? I don't golfers. Know. Golfers, yeah. Golf maybe. players, I same thing, same thing. It's golfers. I'm so stupid. And I live in Bethpage, eh? Bethpage yeah. Black. Everyone loves it. Yeah. Let me tell you, uh, he's had a tough life, man. He was a child superstar with his dad. And then when his dad died, everything just went downhill, you know, with the, the cheating and all that big thing. And, he, and he's trying to make a comeback. And he was doing pretty well. But now this car crash is pretty bad. And people are saying that... Uh, that he didn't, he didn't look too good. I mean, I don't know how good he's supposed to look after a big-time car crash like yeah. that. But they were saying that he didn't look like he was right in the head. I think it, it's a thing where, you know, you're in shock. You don't know what's going on. But uh, hopefully he's okay. But, man, I'm looking at these pictures. What do you think happened? You think he just wasn't paying attention? I, I think he was I think he was probably texting and driving or something. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Because mm-hmm. right after that, that DUI in 2017, yeah. that's when it went down, really downhill from him. The guy was a superstar. The guy was, like, up there with Derek Jeter. Uh, except Derek Jeter didn't take a right turn and the car flipped over. Jeez, yeah. Uh, Dwayne Wade reflected on Tiger Wood. Dwayne Wade is an analyst now. Uh, yeah. Anytime you play sports, you can analyze sports. Well, no, I mean, I is he is he still playing? Did he retire? Or we're supposed to know we, we're supposed to know what, what what we're doing. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, you know. I don't think so. Yeah, he's he's retired. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tiger Woods. Um. Yeah, I mean, I remember. Of course, you know, that was like my. Fr- I think it was like my freshman year of, of high school. Whatever. It's just like Tiger Woods uh, and the whole like cheating on his wife thing with the porn stars and all that. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I I didn't see the actual injuries on him, but yeah, I mean, I just saw the crash itself it was all flipped over, and apparently they got the jaws of life to yeah. rip it open. It was weird because when I was driving to the city yesterday, I, someone got in a bad car crash, and the jaws of life had to come, and uh. Oh Block traffic, God. so thanks to that guy for making a wrong, for texting and driving, because then it held me up. That's the takeaway point here. <laughs> Hopefully he's okay. I mean, there's never really nothing to really talk about. What, are we going to analyze his car crash? Like, I don't know. Um, totally. So, I don't know. I, it happens. I, I, yeah. At this point, if he's I'm Tiger okay Woods, though. I'm trying to win the big U. I'm trying to win the biggest tournament that, that I can, and then leave. I think it's time for him to go. Yeah, I mean, he's... I saw him at the uh, when I when I went to the uh, new 2018 U.S. Open in Shichinokak Hills. Actually, had the hat right there. I saw him. I saw his, I saw him play, and I saw uh, his giant yacht. He lived on a boat for the whole tournament. That's the, sick. The two week tournament. It yeah. was. Let me tell you, the the U.S. Open is sick. You have to walk a lot, but it's dude. It was amazing experience. Pat Osborne out there. He got me the, those tickets. He secured the bag. Nice. It was great. It was a great time. Pat Osborne, Chris Durst, Chris Durst. Oh Let's move God. on. We we've been we we we've become way too comfortable, <laughs> or you've been we become way, way too comfortable with the Chris Durst references. Let's move on to but, uh, the biggest. Sto- oh, okay, yeah, go. Well, I was just gonna say that you know, I mean, one thing I know about the Shinnecock Hills Open, uh, the other year, um, they they used to have a full time station by there, the Shinnecock Hills like L I double R, and they temporarily reopened it. Uh, yeah, for the for the yeah, open, it was sick. You know, kind of like Bel- how Belmont was treated. You know, before the Islanders are going to move in this year, but um, yeah, uh, so that's cool. But I think they should open it full time again. I think that, you know, we should open up all our old, uh, public transportation stations. And- no, we're just going to make real estate places lower uh, everywhere. Okay, <laughs> Peter, this is Long Island. This is Suffolk. This County. is the Hamptons. This is the Hamptons. We don't have we don't have no clubs. We don't have nowhere to eat. But we do have real estate places. Yeah, and, real estate. and buses that come when they want to come. Oh, know? buses! Dude, when I was in Italy, the the Italians were like, "Yeah, buses." They don't. I was like, "I gotta take a bus to the airport," and they're like, "You're gonna have a better chance of walking." 
than the airport. I heard the I heard the UK is really good with buses. Yeah, the, yeah and, of course. Uh, I mean, they're like they're like the New York City. Like, they're fine. They're good. And Russia is even better. Oh, here we go. Every but... show we get it. You went to Russia. We understand. Every show it's Russia, Russia, Russia. But I was in the we city. We get it. You went to Russia. You filmed nothing because uh, I don't see what you filmed. Okay, this guy goes to Russia. Uh, out of nowhere, and to do a film shoot, he comes back with no film. <laughs> Tell the people about because you never really spoke about why you went to Russia. Like you spoke about why you went to Russia, but what did you do in Russia? I was producing a travel series, and you know, it's just uh, they're roadblocks and stuff. But you know, it was a great experience. You know, especially my time away from doing the travel series, I had a great time. I was in the city for two weeks that invented LEDs. Uh, back in the the Soviet, you days. are a nerd, and no, it was great. It's the commuter city, Nizhny Novgorod, their fifth biggest city. There's trolleys everywhere. You know, tram. They have a tram that goes across the, the where the Volga River and the Oka River meet. Absolutely beautiful city. Great food, charma, everything. Amazing, amazing place. Um, the subway system, pristine. It's great. Buses, and it's the best. I don't know why every city should be like that. You know, and we're a rich. Okay, but where where is the uh, where is the film of the series? Where where is it? NDAs. It, what year did you go? Twenty seventeen. <clears throat> NDAs only last about like three or four years. All right, so there's no NDA. I, I just know there's no NDA. I made it up, but <laughs> tell us what happened. No, I don't know. We just because uh, you really like try- want to work with those people again. Even if they hear this, you really want to work with those people again. No, I have nothing against them. It wasn't necessarily their fault, but you know, it was just how it happened. You know, some things fell through, um, and some of them were self-inflicted wounds by some of these people. But you live and learn. Okay, but tell, um, quick, we we only have like a couple minutes, like fifteen minutes left. Tell me, uh, do a short story, do short of uh, how you came to go to Russia, okay. and then what happened at Russia. So. Okay, so I always wanted to go. I'm quarter Russian. My grandfather's Russian. If you watch Seinfeld, there's that episode of uh, of it when George gets married to a Latvian Orthodox woman. And uh, if you ever went to Williamsburg, Brooklyn, there's that church uh, on the corner of McCarran Park, the big park over there, uh, North 12th and Driggs. And it's the Onion Domes. It's the Orthodox Church. That's the church that they used in Seinfeld in the episode. And... Um, my great great grandfather helped build that church, helped start that church. It's a very well known church; everyone knows it. And uh, when my grandmother was alive, and grandfather for that matter, um, every time that episode was on, that part of the episode was on, my grandma would just yell from the other room, like, you know, Peter, Pop's church is on Seinfeld. So I'd go run over and I'd see Pop's church on Seinfeld. And um, so you know, Morning. that's all that. And um, it's Seinfeld, man. Seinfeld's not anything but boring. Hurry up and. And I always want to go to Russia. I was I've been teaching myself Russian for years, you know, on and say, off. Say follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram. No, on Russian. Oh, um I can't. WWS or on, on iPhone. WWS or on iPhone. Worldwide Sports Radio Network on Android, Google Play Store. Worldwide Sports Radio Network on Android, Google Play Store. Very good. So I, I was at Brooklyn College. It was my second to last year and um See, the my, audience he did not say B C. Yeah. And I just saw his flyer in the film department. You know, look, if you want to travel to Russia or do a travel series. So I, I, I You emailed. probably had the biggest heart on when you saw that. All right. I don't know if that's appropriate for the air, but... Um, I think so. I was excited. I was excited. Um, I was okay. like, all right, yeah, let's make this happen. And, um, you know, we, we had... Um, <clears throat> Uh, so I, I emailed the guy with my cover letter and resume. Um, I don't know why he asked me. It goes back into the cover letter thing because, you know, I was working with him since then. And it's just like, you know, um, I ended up working with him for that. And, you know, just looking for other people where, where you know, it's like, should I ask for a cover letter? I, I, I don't know if I really should because I, I don't care about that. I'm like, no, don't do it. But so I sent my cover letter and resume when I try to get into this. And, uh, you know, met the guy and we talked and, you know, he did have uh, some, he already had agreements with people like letters, letters of intent and stuff like that from this, um, this uh, SUV company, this like custom SUV company. Um, I forgot what they're called. I can't remember right now. American something. But, you know, it, it, was, it was a legitimate operation. It was the entire time. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we're just basically trying to do a travel series in Russia and all over the world that, 
you know, lesser known places, kind of like, you know, um, parts unknown with, with Bourdain. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of like that, but, you know, also like less of the political stuff that, you know, he always injects there with, um, the CNN, it was the CNN show, right? Was that parts unknown? Yeah. You know, when you went to CNN, it was very like, always inject this political stuff and, you know, it would always be accurate. It's just like, we don't want any of that, you know, right now. Um, and at the time tour, despite everything with Trump and Russia, the whole Russia gate conspiracy theory that ends up being nothing, um, that was going on, but tourism in Russia from the United States was up during that time. Uh, so we have all these things, you know, to, to like pitch around, you know, and we talked to a lot of people, a lot of people, including NBC producer and all that. And <clears throat> people out in the Hamptons. And of course the people in the Hamptons were very okay, flaky. Keep going, keep going. Okay. But you're, you're in Russia. Fine. You're in Russia. So yeah, we, we got there, you know, we got there. It wasn't exactly what we wanted. You know, we, we couldn't get everything, um, together, but you know, we did shoot some stuff. Um, and you know, it was okay. It wasn't the best. It, it was just kind of what the, the, the deck, the, the hands that we were dealt and uh but it, it was the fun time it was a really fun time you know i really had the time of life i i want to go back i miss it every day i cry about it every single day it yeah was you the don't best. shut up about it you always talk about it so, yeah it but... was amazing it's a great city people don't know it but the place where leds were invented okay but what happened to the film what happened what happened that's what i want to know i just you... didn't go anywhere it's on it's kind of on hold right now you know i talk, i still talk to him occasionally but did you film stuff we did. How much footage? How many hours of film did you do? Uh, actual footage. Um, it was sort of like a, a promo thing. So it wasn't too long. I mean, I feel like we did shoots for a combined eight hours. Um, maybe, yeah. Like, in that whole time, it was like eight hours. You know, a lot of free days. Because people would drop out. People would flake. Because, I don't know. Whatever the problem was, like, it would be like another person that I wasn't talking to, but the, the creator of the series was. You know? Basically, and, and that was the situation. You know, people would flake out. Um, whether it's his fault or not, Did I you don't get paid? know. Oh uh, yeah. How much? Um. Well, I'm not gonna say that. It's 2017. <laughs> just how much? Um. If anybody else out there wants to do something like this, how much should they get? Well, they should get more than what I got. How much did you, you know? get? Well, I will say that they should be getting like, I don't know. They should be getting like, you know. Thousands and thousands of dollars. And how much did you get? I'm not gonna say. It. Say how much you I'm made. Not gonna say, say it. it. I'm not gonna say it. It's 2017. All right, but that's not the point here. Okay. NDAs. Uh, me, NDAs. Give, do you don't have an NDA. You already say that. No, but that was for do, a different do situation. A, do a uh, do a uh, okay. I made from this to this. I made from three thousand to eight thousand. Okay, that's not too bad. And you did pay for your expenses. Well, I did at first. Yes. You had to pay out of pocket? At first. And then they reimbursed you? Exactly. Is that reimbursement in how much you made? No, no. Uh, there's also stuff on top of that. So you made, I'm going to think you made 3000 That's what I'm thinking. That that's how much you, you, you made. Um, yeah, More than that. More than that. But yeah, it, it is in that range. And um, it was a great time. Again, you know, and it's not too expensive. Um, I don't know about, you know, after the pandemic's over, how cheap it's going to be. If it's going to be even cheaper. I don't know. But I mean to go back... Um, I gotta find my passport because uh, I don't have I, your passport. I don't have. As soon as I came back home, I, I it just. Um, if anybody wants to be Peter, go go find his passport. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'll be. <laughs> it'll be Sean Lennon will steal my passport. <laughs> All right, we got the last ten minutes here, so we got about five minutes. All right, uh, let's talk about the last story here. Tom Brady. Everybody knows what happened to him. Tom Brady, drunk. Uh, listen, the guy just won a Super Bowl. He just <laughs> killed the Chiefs. Uh, the guy could be hammered on a boat if he wants to. It, there's nobody better in football than him. So people are make, making fun about it, and people are making fun about how he threw the trophy. Gronk caught it. Whoever caught it. I think it was Gronk that caught it. He's a quarterback. He, the guy knows how to throw. Mm. How are you going to tell him not to throw a football? He threw a football. Just because it was a, you know, uh, a platinum-coated uh, football, it's still a football, so he did his job. So people are making fun of him about throwing it, throw, throwing the trophy football. It doesn't matter. It was a football. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, about that, I mean, yeah, and the thing is that he became the the uh, MVP for the, the playoffs, whatever, the, the Super Bowl. Um, and everyone's talking about how, like, the defense, and I was watching the game, you know, how the defense is really what, what won the game, but they don't recognize defense. And that happens in a lot of sports. You know, they don't... Defense. And that's what wins championships. Defense wins championships. You know, like, um, Mahomes couldn't get anything done. You know, he his uh, offensive line wasn't really helping him too much. And 
Also, the Bucks defense was really good. You know, they were on top of them. They were on top of everything. You know, it's kind of like how um, <clears throat> in the the NHL, the uh, um, the the, def- the best defenseman award, the Norris Award, the Norris Trophy, is given to the best defenseman. Well, usually what that means in practice is it's given to the best offensive defenseman, the, the defense with the most points. But when that shouldn't be, I mean, it should just be for de- you know, best defenseman all around, let's say, mm-hmm. you know. But they just don't recognize defense, and you know. So Tom got the trophy. He was good. You know, he got the job done. Listen, obviously. you can't be mad at a guy for throwing a football when he's a quarterback. Okay, you can't get mad at a guy for throwing the Lombardi Trophy. Uh, the Stanley, it's all football. The Stanley Cup is how much bigger than that? And everyone, they they drink out of it. They pee in it. They have their dogs eat kibble out of the the Stanley Cup. You're getting mad at Tom Brady for throwing a football. Yeah, honestly, it's like bizarre. think about it. You get it mad at a guy for for being drunk. The guy threw a perfect pass. He was drunk and hammered. Okay, if that doesn't show that Tom Brady is the best, I don't know what will. And that's come from a New Yorker. He's really good. You know, he's really good. That's it. Listen, know? he's in Florida. It's the Wild West there. They, no one, they don't wear masks. They do anything there. It's great. Like what they don't have. There's no rules. There's not like New York where every, everything's a rule. They, it's a, it's the Wild West. Whatever you want. If he wants to be drunk throwing footballs, let him do it. He's in. Tampa. He yeah, left, what else are you going to do? He left cold-ass Boston to win in Tampa. Okay? Okay, Bill Belichick. All right? All right? So, shut up. Let him let him do. Let him play. And let the kids play. He got, you're getting mad at a guy for throwing a football. Yeah, honestly. And, and it wasn't damage or anything like that. I mean... It's probably worth more now. Yeah, honestly. I would I would have put on the thing uh, the day... Tom Brady threw this drunk. Yeah, action on there. Perfect pass. 10 out of 10. I bet you now, I bet you now that this, this going to be a thing now where people are throwing the throwing the trophies and someone's <laughs> going to break that trophy. Oh and that's God. all I got to say. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a team sport and he was on it. He played well. I mean, I don't really get the whole, I don't know. I get it, but I also don't because then it's like the Stanley Cup. Like, everyone gets a day with the cup and... You know, everyone they did whatever they want with it. I mean, when Ovechkin won the cup in 2018, he won fucking. Aha! I, mean, uh-huh. I st- you were close. You almost said the F word. You were close. Like, yeah. So yeah. All right. So uh, you thank cut God. Off I, I don't. No, no, no. I'm not telling Pete Speedy. I'm not telling Speedy. I'm not doing this every show. Tell him to, to cut something out. Okay. You were close to saying it. I'm not. But I'm, if you did notice it, Pete, you know. Okay. I know you're listening. But I'm sorry not. About it. But um. You're fine. Okay. So whatever. Um. We'll figure it out. God. But. The, I, Ten minute, I, it's five friggin- minutes left, and you and you almost curse. It's frig, yeah. it's friggin' like just not. It's um, what was I saying? The trophy, how they deal with it. You know, they do what they want with it. Oh, you were saying the F word. If you want to finish the F word, so they they just have a deal with the trophy, and they do what they want. I mean, Ov Ovechkin was going nuts, going friggin' insane, partying with the cup because he finally got it, and he's one of the he's one of the best players. You know, he might he might catch Gretzky's goals record, but cool. I mean, you know, who cares? I mean, you know, Tom Brady has the most, you know, Super Bowl wins, you know? Tom so. Brady's laughing. Okay, Tom Brady, drunk, is a better quarterback than 99% of the people that try to become quarterbacks. Yeah. And that's all I got to say. That's this all. This is how you know. All right, that'll be, us, that'll be it for us today. Uh, 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 Peter, whatever your name is, uh, get the commercials ready. All right, this is How You Know, a comedy radio show starring Peter Lewis, Austin Titel, and Jared Harvin. Uh, hopefully Jared's on audition and he did make it. Hopefully, let's see what happens. Um, I'm Austin Titel. Follow me at Austin Titel. That's A U S T I N T Y T E L on Instagram. But before you do that, before you like me on Instagram, make sure you download the app WWSRN on iPhone, WWSRN on iPhone, and Worldwide Sports Radio Network on Google Play, Android. Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Google Play, Android. Now, before we go, I'm going to ask Peter. Peter, you want to say anything? No. Peter, can you do... <laughs> hope Maybe he will probably won't do it, but I'm going to ask him anyway. Peter, can you do your mom and your dad saying bye, signing off, saying bye to, to the fans? All right, bye, everyone. Yeah, bye. You go. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, dude. No, that's what he does. No, that's, quick, what he, quick, that's what he does. Quick. That's what he does. All right, I'm going to give you... I'm going to get quick. We, we have comments. I want you, your mom and your dad, just, just one... An award for being the best best radio show of all time. What's their speech? Wow, I can't believe that we actually won. Yeah, this is great. You know, okay, bye. Because <laughs> my dad does not like attention. He 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 he, he, he shies away from attention every time. Uh, like the Girl Scout cookie story. 
We'll tell that next time. Next time. I mean, next time. Next time on How You Know. How You Know, comedy radio show. But stay tuned for after this show at 4 o'clock, uh, the World, uh, Worldwide Sports Radio uh, Worldwide Sports Radio Network presents the sports hit list by the fans for the fans at 4 o'clock. That's the sports hit list by the fans for the fans at 4 o'clock. You know, it's Carl and his staff and his his people that work on his show. Great show. I like, like that show. Good stuff. All right. That's it for us. How you know a kind of radio show. Follow us. All right. Bye.